Hello everybody. I want to take a minute and I want to talk to you about uh, how to prolong the, the life of the battery in your car to prevent breakdowns in the winter time. Uh, the same information applies to your lawnmower. The, the first thing is everybody says I don't want to have my car serviced because it costs a lot of money. But that is very true. The number one reason for that is, is the technician's safety. First of all, you're going to want to have a good quality pair of uh, safety glasses. These are shaded for outdoor use, but they come in clear, all, all different styles. These are very inexpensive ones. This is a pair of goggles. They're still in a wrapper. You can buy them at a hardware store for just a few dollars. Insurance companies typically typically require a face shield to keep their premiums low. This is a typical face shield. And it protects the technician in case, case that their, uh, uh, the battery explodes. It, it, it's just, just good practice to, to work safely. And there's, there's a bunch of other tools that you need. Uh, for, first thing you want to do is you want to clean all the, the corrosion off. When you see the terminal ends, this is a, a universal style. And right here where the wire goes into it is kind of a, a poor connection. But this is just a, a do-it-yourself uh, uh, repair job. Right, right here where the cable is, you're going to see a bunch of white, white scum, uh, blue, and green colored stuff. And you want to uh, get that off of there. And sometimes you see a real black substance, and it's really hard to scrub off of there. What you want to do is you want to put about a tablespoon of baking soda in a, a pint of water and you want to dribble it on there and it's going to really foam up and start dissolving that stuff and then you'll take a, a stiff brush and, and scrub it off. You want to wipe down the entire top of the battery, get all the, the dirt and, and uh, acid residue off it and hose it down. This right here is a, a specialty wrench for a uh, General Motors car. It's a 5 16 hex and this is a ratcheting wrench to save some time. They also make one that has a long handle on it for certain applications. This is the same thing in a 10 millimeter. A lot of uh, import cars use 10 millimeter hardware. It just saves a little bit of time. There's another tool to check the electrolyte with, but most cars have a maintenance-free battery and it's not a common practice today. That's kind of a obsolete technology. This right here is called a refractometer. It's got a window on it right here. And you put a drop of electrolyte on here and close the lid. And then you'll look through the end of it and there's a scale in there and it tells you this specific gravity. You can also use that to test your engine coolant for the freeze protection. I've got a little tool right here I made. It's just a, a, a bulb out of a tail out of solder and some wires onto it. Hope you can see here. And what I do with this is I connect it to the, the battery on my lawnmower in the winter time about once a month. I'll leave it on there for about two hours and it draws two and a half amps. And then I'll take a charger like this and I'll charge it three times the length of time I put that light bulb on there. And what that does is it gives it a little bit of chemical activity. It'll drain the battery off slowly and then you'll build it back up and that prevents the battery from going bad while it sits all winter. One of the biggest complaints I see in the springtime is that everybody has to buy a lawnmower battery. It's, it's just about this big. It's about a fourth of what you see in a, in a modern car. This right here is a, a digital voltmeter purchased from Radio Shack. Cost about $25. And that's a very good tool. You put these two leads on the battery and it tells you the volt, voltage. Voltage should be around 12.6 volts on a full charge battery. While it's running, it should be about 14.5 if your alternator is putting out the proper amount. If you turn the headlights on, it shouldn't drop below 13.8. If your car has a, a memory in it, 
uh, memory for the clock, memory for the computer. They sell some leads like this, just where you can build the wires any length you want by buying these ends. Here's a little packet of them. And what you want to do is you want to take a, a, a small battery like you'd use on a deer feeder and you'd want to connect it to your battery cables while you're servicing the battery and that will keep the memory in your car from being erased. That means the uh, your radio won't go, go into a security mode and uh, sometimes if that happens you'll have to get a technician to reset it for you. So I would suggest getting a small battery. That they make them very small now. You can get something about just a few inches tall. Half the size of this box. And they also make an adapter for that that you can connect through the cigarette lighter. And that's normally what a technician does. That They make a very simple one that holds a 9 volt battery but you've only got about 5 minutes to get it done. So I suggest getting a, a larger battery for a deer feeder which you could uh, leave it connected for several hours. The biggest problem I have with using these generic clamps like this is there's a heavy lead that comes out off of here and goes into the uh, power relay center and if you buy just a standard basic battery cable from the auto store it's not going to be equipped for that and you're going to have installation problems and possibly problems with your computer. You need to uh, buy the factory cable. I was saying that if you use a universal battery cable and you just patch the wire together to the power distribution center that you may have problems with corrosion or a bad connection or it will give you a bunch of issues with your computer. So I would, I would recommend using the uh, factory cable if, if that's a, an issue because I've run into that problem several times myself working as a technician. Um, this is kind of a deluxe battery tester. It's a digital version of, of what, what they used to use years ago. Back in the old days they did a, a full load test where they pull ha half the uh, capacity of the battery and check the voltage. And on this unit you just program in the uh, cold cranking amps and it takes about a minute and it'll, it'll tell you if it's defective and it'll, it'll give you a scale of what your actual cold cranking amps are. It's kind of a nice, nice, nice little tool to have instead of having a, a big machine you got to push around in a shop. But I want to go over battery chargers a little bit so you kind of understand what to, to look for when you buy one. There's a scale on here that tells you how to charge the battery. This is a one amp charger, which means it would take about three days to charge a car battery. Generally, this is what I use on a motorcycle or on my lawnmower because it's a low current draw and it can take, it should take six to eight hours to recharge your battery. If you try to recharge it in an hour, you're most likely going to damage the cells in it. I've got this one that I purchased at Walmart a few years ago. I think I paid $20 for it. And you see a, a meter on here. When you first plug it in, it's going to go up here to the high. And then as it charges, it's going to come down. You see a scale on there. It says 100, uh, or it says zero down to 100% charge. And usually after it gets down to about 75, I'll, I'll take this switch and then I'll flip it down to 2 amp. The high setting on this is 6 amps, like it says here. Then I'll just let it cook for another couple of hours and it just finish charging the battery at a very slow rate, similar to driving the car. There's also a 6 volt setting on here, but that's kind of obsolete. It's uh, sometimes used on trucks. They just still use a lot of 6 volt batteries. And most of the time, like I said, you'd want to disconnect the uh, battery cable when you're charging it. And you'd want to have a remote power supply so you don't have any uh, issues with your, your radio or security problems. Uh, the computer going bad. It might may go into a theft mode where it thinks that it's being stolen because the battery was disconnected. But what I wanted to tell you is you want to slow charge your battery. You want to buy a battery charger under 10 amps or maybe 15 amps or, or if, if you do get one with a boost capability. You don't want to use the boost until the battery is, is recovered some. 
otherwise you're, you're just wasting your time and you can damage the battery or if the voltage goes too high on your electrical system it can hurt the computer. There's about six computers on a car now. This is not, not something to take lightly. Well, thanks for watching and, and I may do another video soon.